Hello and welcome to This and That. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi, Dave. Hi, this is The Skating Lesson. We're going to be discussing all things going on at the Finlandia Trophy and in the skating world in general. So if you're new here, please subscribe below and smash that like button. Jonathan, it's like a gloomy weekend here all weekend, all Sunday. You're looking very dapper, very Frank Harrell. What's happening? Are you, Thank you. I turned 40 tomorrow. This, I, I, I realized it was deceptive because I showed the birthday vase I bought for myself. Yes. Like a couple, of, but I buy myself birthday presents all the time. As you should. No, yeah. you absolutely should buy it. As so is tradition. A certain age and financial point in life, it's the best present you get. Yeah, one, yeah exactly. Because if I don't buy it, who's going to buy it for me? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. exactly. You know, any for. It's very cozy, but this, this week of skating was very like. Okay, Finlandia Trophy, it's a nice challenger event. So was, you know, Nebelhorn. But then the depth here was so immense. I was like, this is, there are so many interesting people in each field. Like, since when am I watching like all top 10 in a challenger uh, series like this, this early on? But there was so much to. So to interesting. People, people were like, did you enjoy the skating? And I was like, well, I thought it was interesting, but it's different than maybe. Like, were there performances that were there performances me? I enjoyed? Sure, yes. yeah, but, yeah, but really more than it's others, more, but yeah, it's it's an intellectual thing going into the season, I think, yeah, that is interesting I've, most. Yeah, I found it more of an intellectual sometimes when like very fans they get very emotional and I, I want to match their enthusiasm, but but you know. can't always <laughs> well, when you've watched skating for this long, but right. you know, exactly. You're like, Come exactly. On. And when your eye is sort of on the prize, it is funny how in the you know, as we're all striving to be in the moment and not look too far in the future. Like this skating season is the anti-mindfulness because I am all like, what does this mean for the Olympics? Well, what does this mean for the Olympics? Well, yes. let's just start off. I mean, what does this mean for the Olympics? <laughs> well, which country do you want to start with? But, you know, this competition was very interesting because there were so many competitions within the competition, right? I mean, if you're going to go with pairs, it was about, um, you know, Vanessa James and Eric Radford against Kirsten Moore Towers and Michael Marinero. What does that mean? And what does it mean for the second spot in the US with Ashley Kane and Timothy LeDuc uh, versus Jessica Kellang and Brian Johnson? Uh, there, and then how about um, Tarasova and Morozov versus Mishina Galyamov? And what does that mean uh, as we go in Russia and for the, potentially for the Olympics? And since when does Spain have such a lovely Paris team? Right, right. And, and that well, was a yeah. nice bit of news for me, yeah. <laughs> and then if we're, I, mean, I think people want us to talk about the ladies first so we can start with the ladies and, mm -hmm. and go on from there. But there has been a lot of things brewing in Russia and I don't want to say how I know this, but uh, within the Russian Federation, um, there's been a lot of talk that uh, this competition was going to teach Alyona Kostrnaya a lesson. And thanks to our friend at skatingscores.com, if you look at uh, the enhanced protocol for the free skate, uh, when you see three performances um, of uh, Kamila Valieva, uh, Elizabeth Dukdemisheva, um, Lona Hendricks, and then Alyona Kostrnaya, very interesting that um, the Russian judge actually placed uh, Lona ahead of Alyana Kostrnaya in the components, which they didn't have to do. Yeah, Karen Chen matching much of Kostrnaya's components here, even though she was, you know, had a finished when, girl between them. When the own Russian judge does that and was told ahead of time that the Federation is over her, they're over the drama, they're over the situation, they're over Rizanov, they're over all of this stuff. Um, and they're over the fact that there was a big uh, showdown after, uh, when she didn't do the second triple axel at the test skates um, in, uh, at the, uh, the, the test, Moscow yeah, skate the, or whatever. The test, yeah, the yeah. test, she didn't do the second triple axel, sorry. Um, they were, you know, there was a meeting, you know, each person you get feedback based on your performance, right? Um, and it was, you know, that's, this is not good enough. This is not Olympic worthy. This is, you're, we're not going to give you the scores. Remember, you get the Russian bonus and then the Atari bonus, and this is how these scores get so big. And those bonuses can be taken away if they have two other people they're going to the vie for because they think they're sure of that. I, also I mean, Costa and I have made it easy for them because there were errors on the triple axel and she didn't have it in the short and she didn't do a second one. So, you know, I mean, she justified the scores she was given, I felt. The one thing is there is a difference in her body this year. And then what I mean by that is there's a stiffness in her upper back. Um, and 
she doesn't have some of the agility and the lightness that she had. And some of that could you know, very well be due to injuries and be preventing her uh, from this, but there's a difference and she's stiffer, right? Her choreography and performance is not as special. We've heard that she doesn't really like her programs. That's been one of the sources of tension as well as you know the triple axel. She she's, right to, she's right to doubt them, quite frankly, because what <laughs> makes her special and what could set her apart in this group, she doesn't maximize in these programs. Yeah. Yes, it's classical music. <laughs> she's not skating to it. So what the things she can do that we all love, she's not doing. So, and she's not doing the jumps. So this is tough. The fact that she got the components that she did, Behind to Tamisheva, who has more smoke breaks where we're going like this than right. anyone. I mean, right. charming girl, but is this Ice Wars 1999? Or are we competing uh, for the Olympics, right? Yeah. And I think with Kustranaya, she looks slow. Um, there, just like a lack of enthusiasm and a lack of belief, confidence that joie de vivre. She was so special. If you look two years ago, that expression, when she's doing the twilight program that I'm gonna do it and look at me and look at the footwork and look at the light and she has lost that. And is it her? Is it the coaching situation? Is it the pressure? Is it everything? What is the reason? But it's not the same product that it has been along the years. She looks diminished compared to what she did before. And I, fans get so behind people and they're not going to like that we're saying this because they love her and she's a very special skater and they're going to say change the music and change the program. You have to, you can love her, but you have to see what's in front of you right now. And let's think about this. You took a, you took a girl who was very confident when she was winning everything, very easy to be confident when you are winning everything and then when you have a season like last year and now you've come back and you're forced to grovel and now the coach you're traveling with you clearly don't like i mean the the he didn't like her they were not happy you could see his face when she got the score above camila that was not supposed to happen at this competition one right. camila was not supposed to fall on the triple axel and that's another conversation but she was not supposed to be here it was she was supposed to be clearly the third russian girl and that right. was that was intended going in and the coaches knew that yeah I just think so. Whether if you're Kostranaya, who wants to be doing that? The, you could well, cut the tension with a knife in that kiss and cry between. They them. want her to get her act together, or do they want to push her out? Or, or do they, you know, I, it's forcing that point. And yeah. unclear if does she care, does she not care? But it's at that point where it's not a good situation, right? It's not good. They, she's not in favor. You can see it that she's not in favor. Uh, losing the Tukhtamisha for here. It's unfortunate because she is so special. And then we saw such glimpses of it. I thought last year when she did the Billie Eilish program on, um, you know, the, the Team Two Breeds of Champions on Ice show, uh, we also saw her bring back other programs, the Adios de Nino, the other programs that she did. She had that same quality coming back and the joy that we didn't see last season, right, from her. We saw it in the short program sometimes last season but it, it looks like it's going in the other direction right now. Hopefully she can turn this around and this will motivate her and you know, get her to say, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna get it. She practiced really rough here. Not unusual for her to practice rough at events. We've seen her pop and pop and cry and have all sorts of drama and pull it together. I thought she did pull herself up compared to how we were reading. But if you, you, know, you look at the, the protocol and the under rotation, it was not, strong for her i do think that they should scrap both programs frankly i think yeah, that they're they're to... both huge misses and i i actually intellectually or like on paper understand maybe the reasoning behind a four seasons program but again she responds to not one moment in that music and that's the thing she can do that a lot of these ladies cannot um so it seems such a disservice to have given her such mediocre material if they want her to do well, I think they'll switch the programs. If they don't want her to do well, I think we'll keep seeing these programs. Yeah. If they just want to make her submissive to them. Yeah. I, I don't think the programs are doing her any favors. Um, the Beth Hart, you know, Beth is interesting for skating. It doesn't always work. Sometimes it just sounds like noise. Well, and again, it is right. noise and she's not skating with that same energy. So then it doesn't enhance you know, in the same way when Alexis skated to Metallica, like, yeah, she was all in. So it worked, it can be noisy rock music, but you have to match the energy and her whole skating fights that music. 
Oh. It's interesting. There are moments of the character of the blues that she does well in the beginning, and then it goes in and out in the performance. And obviously, they pulled out uh, the triple axel and they had her do a double, which this competition was the intention was to show the elements that she's going to be competing the rest of the season. And I think what we're seeing is that now she didn't do a triple axel in the short program. She was supposed to do two in the free. We, you know, it was not successful here. She's in trouble. She's yeah. in trouble. And, yeah. um, you know, I think there's time overall. I don't think the Russian ladies are as dominant um, in terms of their own performance as we saw a year ago or two years ago. And what I mean by that is, yes, there are six of them, but Maya Hromich uh, doesn't have, you know, the same consistency, the same performance level, although she's improving. Daria Usushova doesn't have a triple axel or quad. Um, Trusova performing well, still messing up uh, the triple axel. Triple axel. Um, the quads, Valieva. you know, right? Valieva, you know, that's another. They're you know, going to have to figure out what, what to do about this. Sherbakova has restored a quad. We haven't seen it in competition yet. I think that's going to take some time overall, you know, behind coming back. So they're not, usually they're so far ahead. And I think what we're seeing is that the Japanese skaters, especially, you know, Wakaba, although she's had inconsistency issues plaguing her for a long time, she's someone that could contend with them. You know, there's now a chance. Last year, there wasn't a chance, right? Two years ago, there really wasn't a chance that anyone was going to challenge them at the world Which, Championship. Yeah, exactly, exactly. They were going to have to take themselves out of the running. And I think what you're seeing now is that, well, <laughs> it's not so you know, far-fetched. They want, I think Terry wants that uh, podium. I think they're going to go for it. You see them pushing them out, but not... No, what it was going to take for anyone else, probably a Japanese lady, I'm assuming, but for mm -hmm. anyone else to even dream of a medal at those Olympics is they would have to have a major door opened by a Russian lady, which seemed until this season non -pro not probable. But yeah. they're each showing moments of humanity. But again, it goes back to Zagitova. I wondered that Olympic season when she started, she could not skate a remotely clean short program to save her life. Mm -hmm. And then one day it just clicked and she never turned back. She's not do she wasn't doing triple axles. Obviously, she was not doing any quads, but like I was nervous for her because she, like Valdieva, I had been like, she's the young gun, that's the one who's gonna take it. Mm -hmm. But then she started off so bumpy. And so that's why I'm intrigued to follow this Valdieva story. Three well, quads here, but like again, these triple axle errors are really gonna do her in. Yeah. And the PCS for someone making a senior debut and like when she does that short program and she has to start it by like physically running on her toe picks to gain speed because she doesn't know how to do it from the blade. Like for her to be getting such high PCS scores and skating skills in the nines tells you that the judges are behind it, whether that's correct or not. Mm. With Valieva, she's growing um, at the wrong time. <laughs> and I think you're seeing the triple axel where she doesn't use the left arm because she keeps the left arm front and she goes and you're seeing that technique fall and fall again. She was able to fake it last year. She can't fake it this year, right? And that's that Tuberiza technique that we talk about and how their axle technique is not as defined as their other jumps. This one has continually been strong. She's been a skater that is used to hoist this to get the extra inch or two that you would get. And it's not always working, right? Right now the quads are, if she grows any more, it could be game over, right? Yeah. She could also withstand this and keep working and fighting and adjust. The coaches, the rink were talking about that her body lacks the same coordination that she had for the strength to weight and coordination, you know, formula that every athlete has. A year ago, it was like perfect, you know? Mm. Now, mm, yeah, that's vulnerable. vulnerable, nature of the beast, right? Yeah. She did do well here. She came out fighting. I don't find her skating skills that special. She does have a great free leg on the landing. Overall, I don't find the program that special. It is gimmicky and it depends if you like it or you don't like it. You know, I think the music for the short program works well for her. It's just, we've seen it. It's not, she's not inspiring to me. I don't find her to be an athlete that really is expressing the music from inside out to be iconic. I think there are things that she does and has done in her career. When we saw the Picasso program, she was like the most special skater at that point in time, but it hasn't developed in terms of the skating skills. 
We have not seen her really develop artistically. Yes, the material she's hasn't developed either. So it, to, to me, again, they do, this is like when people in Russia get mad because they think we're dissing young women. And it's like, actually, I just keep dissing Danny G because you're doing such a disservice to these talents because they cannot grow with such limited material. Look at how much money, funding, they are putting behind getting a pairs gold medal for Tarasova and Morozov. Their chain, the music is the, the third iteration of the short program that we're up to. If they put the same amount into the ladies, it would be astounding. But instead, they know that it doesn't You're really like, matter. Oh, they're fine. Yeah. They're fine. Right? But in Russia, and in high level, you know, winning in one discipline, good, great. Expected, but, yeah. <laughs> you want to be considered a great coach, you start winning in two or three disciplines, we'll talk. Right. The great, you know, the great coaches, you know, they consider Tarasova, you know, she taught Shizuka, she taught uh, the dance teams, Grisha Kulatov, uh, you know, Klimova. Yeah, of course. You know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. you know, Renina Zaitsev in pairs, you know, Yagudin, you know, that's considered great coaching. So Terry has done the ladies. Now she's really trying to, go, <laughs> you know, get this going in pairs. We haven't seen her have the same success with men yet, but, um, you know, uh, I think we're going to, you know, dance. She's working with Diana Davis. You know, we're seeing her do that same kind of formula that we've seen the real master coaches before. So curious to see, but, but you notice they don't put the same attention on the shit programs for the ladies <laughs> that they do on the right. pair team because they know they're going after the Chinese. They know they're going after Moscovina. They respect and know what their challengers are. They don't really have challengers in the ladies. Although right now Wakaba is kind of crawling, but they know that she's not so consistent. Yeah, I mean, she's got one powerhouse triple axle should she choose to land it cleanly. Do you know what I mean? Like if she had two and it was consistent in the short, then you might have something to worry about more. So and she but... doesn't have the years of momentum behind her to get the marks from the judges. Yeah. Beyond bronze, what's she gonna pull off, right? Unless they really open the door. So come Do on. Do you remember how Jenny used to talk with you about when she left the scoffle? Yeah, And one of the reasons I remember her saying on the show with you guys was that she was like, she loved Evie's technique, like he was so knowledgeable about the jumps, but to be with Evie, you knew you were automatically signing up for Mary Scottfold packaging. And mm -hmm. that that was a real point of contention for her because she wanted something different than that. And that's just the risk that's being run here with Sambo 70. Like, do you want that consistency? Do you want that prestige? Do you want that powerhouse team behind you? You bet. Why does it have to come at, at with all of this choreography? And because it's cheaper, like, because they yeah. can take more of the money, because it doesn't yeah. matter, because the judges are gonna give them the marks. They literally don't care. Because yeah, it it's like the place to skim on the expense and the effort. I, I mean, do you think that anyone's putting any effort into Tutumisheva's right. choreography? I mean, it all right. gets taken out. Every well, year. and as Sandra kept telling us, she's like, the program only counts if everyone's clean, but since they get oh. everybody clean, when you do the quads and they were like, well, we'll give them the marks anyway. Listen, if you don't have multi-directional skating, you cannot get in the higher PCS ranges. We're talking captain the sixes. Look at truth of his program. Look at right. it. Right. Examine it. Okay. So and again, understanding that that may have to be the case in order for her to achieve that, but then she has to be willing to forego the points elsewhere in order to get those. Techniques. But go to skatingscores.com. Are they judging it like that? Right. Well, Yeva got first place in skating skills in that free skate at a 917. I mean, look, high. she's got a great uh, free leg after her jumps. Look at what Paulina Edmonds said about her skating skills. She wasn't wrong. People didn't like that Paulina said the truth. She wasn't wrong. So they attacked. But that's always been their trick is they trick you by like being able to kick the free leg so high that you think everything is constantly extended and, and well placed. But in, indeed, they just rocket all over the place, you know? Yeah. So, Crazy. I mean, from but, a I mean, this point of view, Paulina wasn't wrong. They didn't like it. They didn't like that she said it. They thought Often she, she wasn't. She, she may have been difficult, but she was usually pretty on the money. So. <laughs> when she was talking about the skating skills, she was not wrong. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, you know Paulina did all of her dance tests. I would argue some of these girls have not. Yeah, so. Oh my God. Duke Demisheva, though, is like just the gift that keeps on giving. 
working. Again, just when you're like, ah, I just don't see a possible path for this one. She lands three triple axles. You know, she's getting, she got the highest PCS consistent, like overall in the free skate. She won the short program. I was like, you beat Kostanaya again. I, I can never count her out, even though it seems like she should be. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, she did get a Q um, on the on the first triple axle, but right. not, you know, overall, you know, not horrible. Um, what I like is she's inspired. She's PCS, a little quick, you mean she got first PCS? You're talking about the two programs. She yeah. got the two. Okay, so just wanted to clarify. Oh people, no, in the free skate, she got seventy three seventy two or seventy three twenty two for her PCS. Did she not? Yeah, but oh, but most of the judges really have the other one first. Because like, Valieva ended up with 72.42. 72, so, so Valieva beat her on skating okay. skills, but I have two Dimitriva winning on yeah. okay, transitions, performance, composition, and interpretation. Okay, I'm looking at the, the thing here. I'm just waiting, you know, listen. You make a comment like that and people are going to come. That's true. She had a 73.22 versus 72.42. All right, let's, let's just... <laughs> just... Hello, skatingscores.com. <laughs> <laughs> we're just like listen you say anything about these terry girls we got to make sure oh, dear god okay but again in this kind of competition for Costa by the way Nyan, could not see more boring fucking skating than some of these terry programs and people will talk about it endlessly so oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah that Valero the program is a snooze because oh my god the short program the whole thing um pro this favorite skater of the event lona hendrix yes right. yes like a tired short name. program, but she got in that for the free skate, didn't she? Okay, so the free, she has a freshness, kind of like diet coke cultural appropriation. Not sure that's okay, not okay, but like I stand by it with the animals. I love that music, the exotic sounds. It's like I don't know what was happening. I don't know if that's I'm okay, all about it. not okay. Like not it's okay. Like, I decided. <laughs> We'll let Na weigh in and say that's okay, not okay, but like Queen Na. But uh, I have to say. Um, she had the most freshness to me. She has good knee bend. She has good power from her crossovers. She has good joy. No, she doesn't have the quads, but I enjoy watching her more than any of the other ladies here. She had more presence. Yeah. And, and that counts for something. She's a woman among girls also. Yeah. Like, so I get a sophistication to it. I get- It um, looked tortured. She yeah. didn't <laughs> right? It like, exudes an energy that I like. Suddenly I am reminded of like, the sport that that grabbed my interest initially. Yeah, and I'm she like, oh, had right, this kind of skating. She had something special, right? And, and six triples compared to the other ladies attempting more tech of content, but overall, liked her, really yeah. liked. Her, you know, I enjoy the program very much. Yeah, so uh, I stand by the music. <laughs> and the Russian judge had a third here. Incredible. So, <laughs> I mean, fair enough. Uh, tactically and components, they give a little bit more to Kostanaya, but. By point four, but overall, yeah. Wait, see, now I'm confused again because she, I have her at PCS at 69.34 and Kostanaya. I'm looking at the PCS Russian judge. So the Russian judge has- Oh, a, I see. Got it, got Russian it. Russian judge had Kostanaya at 68.4 for components, but 141.39 overall. And they okay. put Lona Hendrix at 141.63. So, okay. yeah. That's good. Yeah. Comments. <laughs> Very helpful, especially when we're looking at this kind of stuff. Um, well, I think what we're seeing though, I want to ask you about the U.S. ladies because I don't know how you're feeling. Champs camp was rough. Remember when we started the season and everyone was like, "Karen's a lock, three speed, three spot, Karen." Like the whole thing. How are you feeling about Karen Chen? If, well, if Karen weren't with Tammy Gamble, right? Tammy, who Justin Dillon worked as the assistant coach for Justin Dillon, now the underling to Mitch Moyer. Um, how would you feel about Karen's chances based on the actual skating, based on what we're seeing, based on the Autumn Classic in here, would you have concerns? So there's two ways to look at this. One is how is Karen producing as opposed to what Karen can do? How is Karen producing compared to her competitors for those spots? So yes, did Karen struggle here? You bet. Was she under rotating, doubling, doing all these crazy things? Yeah, she was still leaps and bounds ahead of Amber Glenn though. So even though I think that Karen is a bit struggle busing at the moment, she is less struggle busing than a Mariah Bell or an Amber Glenn. And, and to me, though, that's her competition. I, 
Alyssa is making the right statement. Um, Brady is being a little secretive and we have grave doubts about Amber and Mariah. So I don't, yes, although I think Karen's skating is, is not up to par at the moment, I don't know who would take the spot away from her. Yeah, I think Karen is struggling, but in it, right? Yeah, yeah. Although the cues and the unders, I mean, you look at that protocol and you look at what even what it could have been, right? Yeah. And you start to wonder why, like, what is happening? And what and even is still, this is what I keep talking about, that, inter that international judging panel still rewards her PCS because of no. She has good skating skills, right? And she has- Even when skills. she's struggling, they, they're like- yes, I have to say, the short program, to me, the choreography, not what it could be. Right. Music, good. The choreography, mm. When you remember right? the sophistication of the Loon program. Lady Caliph, this thing. good music choice for her. The actual choreography, not so yeah. much. Okay. Uh, she is so special. It's just not up to her level. Uh, her, I mean, her protocol, the, the symbols next to those jumps, it looks like an, an algebra test from hell. Okay. Yeah, it's like the glossary kind of for IJS stings. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, yeah. And I really enjoy her skating more than the other ladies, but I have concerns when this is the top US lady, right? <laughs> Going in. I, mean, I don't think there. she's, oh, you mean, I mean, maybe previously ranked, but it's clear yeah. that at the start of this season, I would consider Alyssa the top US lady. Although I have to say Alyssa's marks may be a bit inflated too. Like, you know. Uh, yeah. It's a tough one. But Karen, Alyssa's producing more than Karen is technically for sure at this moment. To me, Karen's the more well-rounded skater. Um, I don't know that she'll still be ranked number one, but I do like her skating the most, but the real lack of solid jump technique, although Tammy trains her skaters well, why the under rotation is what it is and how they haven't like solved this out in the development is concerning, right? This well, it strikes me as like with, with some people, like with a Roman, for instance, we're like, I feel like the answer is you just got to get out more, compete more. This woman has competed at several world championships, all these ISU events, like uh, at the Olympics. I don't know. Mm -hmm. the, the, there's a glitch somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah I would, having, yeah. having competed as long as she has and having this still be an issue. And for Amber, you know, Amber is one that the Federation has not been behind her. The stories of why, I mean, we know that she was supposed to go to Junior Worlds, something happened, got yanked from that Junior Worlds, has never really recovered politically since. At one point, the Canes were politically favored. It doesn't seem like they're in the same situation that they were. Amber, you know, they- I mean, they she had three clean triples here. It's what she offered in the Jonathan, but it goes beyond that. I mean, yeah. she pulled out with an injury at, although we saw her practice at Cranberry, you know, in the free, um, didn't really see her sense. Seeing her out here, the spin error in the short program, that alone could kill her in terms of perception before the Grand Prix season, unless she pulls off a Hail Mary. Although, as we know, it looks like Russia is favored to sweep maybe every Grand Prix here, you know, unless anomalies happen. Um, I think it's gonna be really hard for Amber Glenn to produce enough content to change the perception of her with the people that are gonna be voting for the Olympic team. I that she could have been in it, but Cranberries, Cranberry already set the tone and this didn't, this solidified that tone. Unfortunate for her. I just think that this short program catastrophic yeah. catastrophic yeah. because they're going to remember that's going to be the knock on her and she doesn't have the world competition to go back on even though she's exciting and that she's got power but something has happened she was skating better earlier in the summer uh she's going to have the height in her jumps that i'm used to seeing she had an injury right. of some sort right but but it's, it's not good. And if she wasn't ready to go out, I don't think that she should have gone out because I don't think that this helped her, right? There's, there's no. that knock about when you're injured and coming back. Like, do you go out in the competition and put it out right. or do you wait to see? And based on the, the perception that she is fighting, it's worrisome. I also have to wonder if there are things that like the Canes don't see, right? Because Ashley and Timothy, 
have under rotations on their triples every season, right? I remember there was one point in time when Ashley Kane told us she was going to do a triple lutz, triple loop that one summer. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? I'm yeah. sorry, right? You have to like, are we living in the same reality? Right. And there are some coaches that see under rotations and there are some coaches that don't. And um, not where Again, I just get chaos. I, I get chaos from an Amber Glenn. I think obviously there's I don't talent see there, but strategy, right? I don't there. see yeah. making good strategic decisions. Even with this triple axle, it's like, yeah, let's try it. Let's not try it. It's close. It's not close. Like I even the programs and the choreography and the even the interpretation of circles and that choreography, I find it very bland. I don't think that they really understand it. I don't think it says anything. I and I like her and I like her power. I like that she's on TikTok having personality and different and not so boring. And but she doesn't infuse that thing that you're talking about that draws you in. She yeah. doesn't use that on the ice. And it was like, be that person. Give us a give us an exciting program that makes us look at you differently. Yeah. Instead, it's just sort of rehashed versions of the same thing over and over. A weepy ballad, maybe a triple axle attempt, some doubles. Here we go. You know, yeah. it's it's rough. It's tough. Yeah. Maddie yeah. Skeezus, I thought better than we've seen before. Not where she needs to be quite yet. Needs to pull it up. Although yeah. not a lot of competition on the senior I level. I don't see Canada. who's compet who's who's taking it away from. Although her. Kaya on the junior level doing well, that I think would be the, her main competitor. I thought Maddie looks better than she did, but not where she needs to be. Although gaining a lot of experience that she hasn't had before. So it's tough. It's like, if she- And respectable in, outings, respectable. If Maddie were in the US, this would be a problem, right? If right. Maddie in Canada, she's growing from event to event. Wait and see, right? Yeah. It's better than it was a month or so ago. So right. yeah. I don't know. Right. I don't know. Let's talk about something more fun. This is, you know, I'm like, oh my God, we just say, hey to the ladies event. I really did. Oh my God, it was depressing. Oh my God, it was like that rainy Sunday afternoon. Um, but yeah. yeah. But the, the men, men, that was like a, a wild, tipsy, turvy journey, wasn't it? It was like the Jeremy Abbott Championships. I mean, it was a hot <laughs> mess, with a lot of talent, right? It was like, there were such beautiful balls. skating, but can't seem to pull it together always yeah okay God, okay where do you want to start Jonathan I was trying I to go positive to start, and Got it this is I was trying to go positive because I was like seeing the YouTube comments and people are gonna be like you hate it all in the skating and I'm like let's go to the dance and you're like and the men and I'm like oh my god oh, oh fine but oh. wait no but, we're already in the men we're already in the men so okay. we, we can appreciate that there are some men skating right now this is how we're gonna make this positive Mm. There are some men skating right now that just embody how beautiful male skating can be. And we did see that in a Kolyada and a Jason Brown and Keegan's mess, Keegan Messing's like skating skills, like the speed across the ice and moments. Like, I don't know, there were some really like good core qualities that a lot of these guys possess, mm -hmm. but it does just seem like such like chaos and a, like just a frenzy until like the Olympics, I guess. Seemed would How never many fly in a lighting for Jason Brown. How many candles you own? You know, I don't know. They, I don't. I might have to save my candles for someone else. <laughs> but here's the thing: we love Jason. We want it for him. We appreciate him. He's obviously behind from the injury, and I think the thing is, is that. Yes, at Champs Camp, he didn't do all of his triples, so the programs were skated a little bit more out. Adding the triples in, under pressure, it seemed that he pulled back and lacked speed and lacked yeah. power, which is just going to take mileage, and it's just going to take confidence. Obviously, I don't believe the quad is going to happen this season based on where he is and what we need to do, right? I think he will continue to get better and get stronger. It's hard to judge the changes to the short program. The short program was such a masterpiece last year. They added some really cool things in, but without the power, speed, and confidence, I was being like, do we like it? Do we not like it? Is it good? I still stand by this program. I still stand, I stand by it. Because you like the changes. I mean, there were some really cool things that were done in the footwork and the choreography, but not done full out. It's hard to yeah. evaluate. I still loved it. 
I loved it. The main thing I never want to see is, or never want to see taken out rather. He does that jump up and then that backward lunge and that bomb, bomb. Like that's just to be like the most brilliant bit of skating choreography I've ever seen. Um, I thought it was, he did a really good job as Chalk and Bates taught us last year with that free dance. It's hard to keep something so good and not let it feel stale. And it did not feel stale. That was my major thing going in. Does this feel rehashed, recycled, stale, tired, whatever it was? And whether it was the changes, even with his energy conservation, I was with it. I still- I was excited it. to see the changes. I was excited to see the, you know, the developments. So I'm excited to see with more time and training what it could be. And I think we'll see more of what we're being put into the program uh, through the short program. And then I think David Wilson, you know, working on the free with him. For the Schindler's List, I mean, it's such a gorgeous program. I love the costume in the shore. The free could grow on me. I'm not there yet. Like, I don't know if they nailed like, just the right look for the Schindler's List, but it's a hard. I don't know that they nailed the Schindler's List costume last time, right, with Jason. But, you know, anything is better than that bowling Simon and Garfunkel program with the bowling <laughs> shirt. Like, anything is better. <laughs> anything is better. So, Amazing. Um, I, yeah, I think the program has, uh, you know, the, the Ina Bauer uh, moment. That Ina is, Bauer is gorgeous. The uh, is moment. gorgeous. Um, it, yeah, this is interesting. I love the, the program overall. When you watch it side by side with Joshua Ferris, it that's the, a little that bit of was the one I was missing. There have been so many Schindler's List programs. The so, one I was craving in this moment was the Joshua Ferris. There was just more soul to it. Yeah, yeah. And, and a little bit more show with Jason rather than feel. It's presentational instead of gravitas. Now he did yeah. give us a, a couple more moments that I'm used to. In the beginning, like he does like this like crouch with like a thud of some sort and you feel the thud in him. And I thought, well, this is more emotional and real seeming than just, just where, pictures. When we're comparing Jason Brown and Joshua Ferris, we're comparing Barishnikov with Murray, right? Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> we're not yeah. shitting or slighting anyone or... No. yeah. It's just, you see a masterpiece and you see like what it could be. And right. you're like, let's, let's add this and let's touch up this and let's polish this, you know, because this is like the moment, right? But and I see Jason taking, even though the program overall doesn't have the emotional impact, something like a Joshua Ferris version did, but this, he, he had some real isolated moments where I thought, oh, he is definitely feeling in that moment. But they were more like beautiful vignettes than sort of an overall arc. But he had to concentrate on a lot, obviously. And based on Tracy's cheers that you could sort of hear in the ear of the camera, this was big news. Now, I saw a lot of people commenting. He does seem like she could sell you an MLM. She could make you join whatever <laughs> cult Kayla Maroney is in. Like, I feel that she is skilled, right? At the bullshit and the art of mind effery, right? Like, yes. she's... <laughs> right. Now, when we love her, we love her. Tracy, yes. we're on to you and we love you, right? Yes. Like these are both, you wanna come. It's all about the glide. And we're just gonna start from that glide and the core. And then we're gonna add in the jumps and it's just gonna, it's just gonna go. And it's just gonna work. And suddenly yes. aren't you calmer? And the fact oh. that you're calmer means you're probably gonna achieve it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, Tracy, yeah. we're on to you and we love it. And we've heard, you know, the stories of your tales. This and we is love when it. some casual fans start to tick me off. And we were sort of talking about this with um, Christine earlier when we were talking about people just like read a headline and jump for it. And all these people clearly saw a podium where Jason was on top and then Kolyada and Alia. And they all started freaking out. Jason has no quads. Jason has no quads. How could he have won this event? And I was like, Jason did not win any program at this competition. Jason was, he was fifth in the free. He was fifth in the free skate. And he won because- I Look at so Keegan's program. That's how he went. Jenny was texting me being like, I think Keegan forgot his program. I think he's making it up. I don't know if he's ever done a run through. So I, okay, that's interesting to get 
your perspective on that because when I watched Keegan, the audience in Finland was oddly rambunctious, which we love. We love an enthusiastic skating crowd. His music got so, everything got wild. Like the, the crowd started clapping along too fast, not in time with the music. And it, they started rushing and his whole timing got a little off and they never stopped clapping. Like they started a minute in and did not stop for three minutes. It's, and I think it threw off his, I think it threw off his whole timing. I think he got totally out of his body and distracted. And I, I think it was the audience's fault. So his free program, that's so funny, the music, it's such a mess for me, but I have such a weird association for it. So his music is Philip Phillips, which I don't know why we're skating to Philip Phillips for an Olympics and like the genericness of it all and just the beige and the beige shirt. And just, I think honey. you just answered your own question though. I think they're going for broad appeal. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think his old program was better, more him. Mm. He's had some big misses before. I mean, how many times do we have to watch him do Chaplin? I mean, it was like Capolini Lenote level. Okay. Now, as I digress, <laughs> this music, we're going to make this place a home, right? NBC randomly used it in 2012 because NBC, NBC Universal, Philip Phillips was on Interscope Records, Interscope Records owned by Universal Music Group, right? So there's a whole lot of like, corporate conglomeration and they just decided that when the fierce five were competing at the london olympics they were going to play this song every commercial break they were going to force it to be a hit when anyone of a certain demographic like women between ages i don't know 18 and 34 in the demo are watching the fierce five and ali raisman and jordan weber they're going to hear this philip phillips song so many times that they're going to become a fan of it during the olympics although were they making the London Arena, the O2 Arena? Was that what they were making a home? It made no freaking <laughs> sense, okay? I've okay. never understood it. I've obviously rewatched this competition before. And every time I'm like, what is going on, NBC? Like, you have given us like great fluff pieces before. You've given us terrible fluff pieces before. You've given us Dominic Mochiano on a raft before. On and on a seesaw and climbing a sugar mountain. What the hell did this Philip Phillips song have to do? I didn't like it then. It was disappointing that like this was such an exciting final and we're hearing Philip Phillips and it made no freaking sense, right? <laughs> now we but have- Those Keegan. emotional connotations last, yeah. We have Keegan Messing who gave us guns and roses and I was like, all right, that makes sense for him. And already Keegan made comments about the vaccine. So anytime we discuss him on CLive, Alive, everyone's like, is he vaccinated yet? Is he not vaccinated? Are we gonna let him go to the Olympic? And I'm like, I don't freaking know, okay? I'm not the vaccine police. I have bigger things to care about than whether this boy from Alaska who used to be American and is now like Canadian and like the most Canadian with his he's hat. Skated to the, he's skated to the Hulk. Right? Didn't I see him he live at like a game With a green home. tight on one leg and a jean pant leg on the other. Okay. Do you get it? Do you get it, Dave? Do you see what he did there? <laughs> and he's been a hot mess ever since. His name on Aunt Joyce was Keegan Hot Messing. And it was, it was a it was a loving term because of the Hulk costume. We interviewed him on C Alive. Lovely. Nice. Was he like in the he was outside in sub-zero temperature the entire time. It was making me so nervous, okay? Yes, because you're like, do you want me to stop talking? Do you need to get a coat? Yeah. I can't get beyond it. And when I watch the music choices and just like the hot mess of it all, I'm like, we haven't changed since the Hulk. And like, lovely kid, lovely skater. Tremendous speed, <laughs> tremendous core, great but knee bend. Great like there's, there's some spin. really exciting qualities to his Oh skating. my God, remember Megan Hamill called him the greatest spinner in the world. And it's like, yeah, if only he turned out the foot, you know, yeah. like. <laughs> he has tremendous speed and center. Yes, he does. But not yeah. positioning, right? Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Oh my goodness. And then. Oh. Yeah, top free skate. I thought this was him to. I thought he was going to run away with this guy. Started with the beige shirt. Okay, you knew which way it was going. All right, and the <laughs> Philip Phillips music. All right, I just can't, I can't. I want to get your take though, like the Koliada <laughs> nutcracker here, complete with costume. Again, this is not the, the program I think a skater at his level deserves. I think he could do something so much more sophisticated and nuanced. Having said that, it almost doesn't matter sometimes how mediocre the material is. Every 
position that boy hits in the, that man, that guy, whatever, in the short program is a beautiful portrait of a figure skater. It does not, not once... look like a bellhop in a Christmas film to you. I... But that's what the Nutcracker is. <laughs> he is a bellhop in a Christmas ballet. I don't, I, I got it. But it, what I liked was that it, it helped me see his line. It helped me appreciate his line. It didn't get it. He's got one of the greatest camel spins of all time. Of all time. Yeah. I love him so much. The programs are freaking messes, both of them. All right. They're just not as special as he could be. Although compared to last year's short program, this one's a 15, all right? Like- But he just little moments. He has the little moments where he does like the click kick in the beginning and he does this leap after the axle that it's just this like amazing open thing. But again, it's less about the moves he's being given and more to how whatever he does, he executes it masterfully. Like if you had a doll, in front of you, I don't think you could pose it into more balladic, beautiful positions than he's hitting. He's amazing. In that short program. Okay. He's Even just his amazing. Carmen, when he popped every jump in that Carmen program, it was still amazing. Okay. It's still beautiful. Yeah. Right. All right. So the free. Right. I am more convinced than ever that we need to go back to the Nureyev program. I'm sorry. Right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen it. It's about a Holocaust and it's depressing. You know is why it's it, depressing? Is it about the Holocaust? Like, okay, you know why it's depressing, this? Jonathan? Because he looks bored. Yeah. And there, some of the moves are downright cheesy. There's nothing emotive. There's nothing special. Last year, he became the music. Right. Now, in his consistency point, I'm very concerned because in the first half of the season last year, it looked like he was making improvements in his mental game. And then it looked like as we got to the bigger championship part of the season, that the nerves came back in and that he lost the momentum. It looks like he has not really recovered the consistency right. to get to that point. That's my concern here. Yeah. Losing to Jason Brown, a diminished Jason Brown, who did both triple axles in the first half of his program, when we all know that Todd Eldridge did the second triple axel at three minutes and 30 seconds into the music, every freaking program, no matter what soundtrack was playing. And then the third attempt still... sometimes at 3.30. <laughs> exactly, okay. You know, it's concerning, right? Yeah, yeah. This is a championship that Kolyada should have cleaned house with. Um, Easily. Yeah. Your, your boyfriend Aliyev, such a hot freaking mess. I don't think I can send him to the Olympics, and I'm sorry. I don't yeah. really. I mean, even though he always like flirts with bringing back that quad lutz, I think he was trying to do it in the short, and then just kind of did the biggest triple you've ever seen. But you know, it's I I am so behind him in general because I I have seen how emotive he can be, but we've just not seen him connect to the material. I've just not seen him kind of like let go with his body like he's able to. And so it just becomes sort of like a mediocre quasi balletic program with some squirrely jumps. And it, it, he, the field in Russia is becoming way too deep uh, for him to just get by with that. Yeah, I'm concerned. I am concerned, yeah. but we'll see. Yeah, um, uh, yeah I don't know. Um, yeah. There's so many more exciting guys coming up. Donovan Carrillo, I'm just glad he's okay. He took a really bad fall in the short program. And it was a weird one. It was like one of those weird falls on the Sal, right? Yeah. Like he fell forward. On I also say, when Camden Polkinen is sleeping, I just want someone to go and cut the choker off, okay? I just, I, it, maybe the choker is the problem, okay? It's just... Something's the problem. It's just unfortunate. I, I have to be honest, like I don't even derive much joy from from watching it sometimes because it's sort of a repeat story it's like wow look at all these amazing qualities that yeah. i'm hitting a wall but, yeah. now last week we waited two hours to film because ah! we, were, <laughs> we were trying to get the papadakis and scissor on free we filmed the show post it Five minutes later, the Papadakis- Literally is five minutes. It's either that or somebody's coming out of the closet. Oh, it's like five minutes just after we finished taping. <laughs> you had a dinner party. We couldn't like, you know, get up. All right. So now we've watched it twice. So- Well, more than twice. More than twice. More than yeah. twice. All right. And then we can go into the short. Last week, I have to say, I didn't really like it. Okay. I have the first outing at the Masters. I thought messy, uninspired. 
this week, I saw a lot of improvements. They looked a lot more confident. I think the camera angles were a lot better. The video quality was much clearer. It uh, makes a difference. It makes a difference. I mean, it's growing on me. It's not my favorite. The final third. When yes. they, after, there is so much side-by-side -side work that I really appreciate that's done in such unison and with such conviction. After they do their sort of final moment of side-by-side -side stuff and they do like, I don't know if it was the, one of the step sequences, I don't think it was officially the diagonal one, but it looked like it was on a diagonal. This like frenzy to the finish. Mm -hmm. It was, that's where they sort of got the thing. In the and I know that classical music aficionados we're into this program from the start because they love this piece. It's a great piece of music. I, I get it, I get it. It's very conceptual, a non-gendered tango that's kind of deconstructed. It's different. I don't know that if there's not a five minute fluff piece by NBC and Tanith Belbin, where they visit Marie France and they explain the evolution and concept of this program and what's happening, I don't think it's anyone is gonna freaking get it unless Mary Carrillo goes to Gabois and they spend a lot of time explaining this program. It, if, so they're not, if they're not presented as like the greatest artiste of all time with a long feature, I think it might fall a little flat for a TV audience. Right? Okay. They don't have the notes that we have. They haven't seen it. They don't know what they're looking at. It's just like kind of a tango and kind of not a tango and like interesting, but the movements are beautiful and the skating is beautiful and they have some fantastic elements, the curve lift, the stationary lift, the you know, like th that part for me, beautiful. But. Well, so I didn't get this gender, um, reversal or absence of gender or whatever, but I did get like, you know, when they do at fancy restaurants, like a deconstructed meal, like it was a deconstructed tango of sorts. Yeah. And the thing with the formula that we're talking about with the Atari ladies, and it's just like, oh my gosh, why are we watching a sport if everything looks the same? And dance runs that risk at times. And the idea that we're getting a tango, but not a tango, because a tango, quite frankly, in ice dance is tired. I find tango music so overused in skating, but this was such sophisticated, nuanced music. And it did give me this vibe in an approachable way where the spoken voice was this way in a way you knew some people were- Wait, 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 wait. We debated so. about that spoken word and I thought it was too much this. And you were like, no, it's okay. Well, you thought it was too much that. It was, it was this, but I was with it. This is a little bit this, but I, I it should be this because they are that because to me, they are that much above I mean, what everyone else we're is this doing. too. Right? Yeah, hello, yeah. <laughs> but so we appreciate it, you know. <laughs> but at the same, I mean, look, they're in no danger of losing to Vicky and Nikki if like, you know, God is real, <laughs> okay? Like, let's... <laughs> well, that's not, I mean, I mean, and they got very good, their scores were a little under where Vicky and Nikki were at Worlds, but like this was a challenger event, first time out, like they, they weren't at their technical best, like they will be later, you know, so. I have to say, although we never saw the program to its full potential, some of the ideas that they were doing in that tango last year, I preferred, although it's less conceptual and creative than this. And again, they're trying to do something like historical, you can tell. They're trying to blow it out of the water in a new way instead of just give you a tango. The ending is so spectacular to this program. It's so good. I was like, so they've got that part, I think. The twizzles way are like, good. Oh. And when he cocks his head and the twizzles, I mean, the difficulty of what they're doing and the originality. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Right? Like, fantastic. Short program costumes, Jonathan. What's well, interesting that they went with all of these reds and like th this whole colorway for both programs. Do you, oh, you mean because it's your costume? <laughs> Did oh, he just damn. use the same two pieces of fabric on mine that he used on theirs? Like you can pull in for you know inspiration from. I day. just want to know: was it cut from the same cloth? Was it cut from the same literal cloth? Remember the mesh that Galena said was too sexy on the back. 
all over the front of their costumes. I mean, <laughs> if I had that body, whatever. All right, I mean, like, yeah, I, dear lord, yeah. But uh, come on, I just, I just yeah. need, like Matthew, the same cloth, like. And again, I I think that they're one of the few. Well, I get a discount place. for inspiration on my next costume because it's like the same color scheme. <laughs> no, in fact, you should be paying for the preview of what a great person like, will be wearing on an Olympic podium the next season. I'm thinking of going black this year. So, yeah, you're right. Okay, but with more mesh. Okay. Yeah. More mesh. Yeah. Okay. okay. With the shape. Yeah. Okay. Again, I think they're the team that are one of the teams that have best solved the heinous dilemma of this year's rhythm dance. They found a way to do. So I was like, by that. you. We were made to. And they're like, does that count? And I was like, you bet it counts. It was a great solution. It was a My great favorite solution. part of the program. Although I love this, is Gabby comes alive on the no touch step. Like she gets so into it with her face and her upper body. And he kind of fades into the background, but that last no touch, she's phenomenal. To me, the midsection, snoozy. I don't love it. You know what? And also, you know, I love to edit. I think I drive Hugo nuts. Hugo, we love him the most, right? But Hugo will do what you tell him to do, right? I don't love the edit from the second piece to the third piece. I would have him add something and massage it. I found it abrupt. Just okay. Like, okay. If Hugo I had, like the twizzle, the if twizzle Hugo had sent that to me, I would have sent it back with edits. But you know what? A post-it note, yeah. No, I'm the, I'm, you know I'm the freaking nightmare. Okay, you know, like, <laughs> music edit. Like, it's Dave again, yeah. <laughs> He's got more notes, yeah. <laughs> it created the most spectacular piece of music, the one that Galena shit on. So okay. it's, right. you know. You should sell it to someone else. <laughs> you know what? Available now on iTunes, yeah. <laughs> so good, okay. <laughs> so in a, in a world, well, okay, I have two things to talk about. Angel, with by the way, Hugo is an angel and everyone should use him. And he's very cost effective yeah. for like all of it. And, and that's the way to spend the money. That makes a big difference. It's funny where people will try to skimp and you're like, I wouldn't skimp on me editing you guys. Um, but for Chalk and Bates here, two things. One is talk about a good ending, but maybe not a good two thirds was how I viewed their rhythm dance. I wasn't really understanding the concept here, but when they got into the Billie Eilish bad guy or whatever it is, suddenly I was like, here Did we go. Really make you feel young. Like, do you have like nieces where you're just like, yes, I know all about Billie because I watched <laughs> They're too young for that. Like, so, but I do feel much more connected that I'm like, of course, Billie Eilish. Yes, yes. I'm familiar with her work. She's if we could all get to Olivia singer. Rodrigo to figure skating, yes, we'd be for it, <laughs> right? Like we're so young. Um, exactly. Yeah. So, Billie Eilish in neon green and black. Um, kind of a moment like Madison Chalk's lipstick. Um, the packaging. I didn't quite understand the connection of the green. Can you imagine though, like, okay, you've been Madison Chalk. You wore the snake dress. You gave us Elvis, right? This is how you're ending your career. Are we an alien in the free? What? What in? Well, okay, we need to talk about it. I didn't. What in the hell research. is going on? It's like the Tron animate. I don't know what. And all the info on Wikipedia on the ISU page, it's all um, outdated because it's outdated. Like and I know that they have a time. podcast called Unlaced. I can't think of something. I'm less interested. I'm sorry. You know what about yeah. podcasting? It's hard yeah. for a team to try it. Like. Lila, I give her a lot of credit because she is a personality. She's someone who should be doing a podcast, right? Right. Paulina, God bless her. Anytime Paulina speaks, I want to listen. Okay, like I just, right? Because you're going to get something. Yeah. You're going to get something. <laughs> okay. Anything else? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So the, it, I, I was confused. I thought it was sort of like a Tron thing, but then I thought it was like an alien love story, outer space, something, but there's a butterfly on it also, but also it's just kind of like a sexy bug. Like I couldn't quite figure out where we were going with this program. And I actually don't know. both both programs seemed better suited to a Hubble and Donahue, quite honestly, than I found it to a Chalk and Bates. They were tacky. They were tacky. Okay. And weird. Okay. And I didn't it didn't didn't capitalize on what she can do. There was one cool move where like he's got her down and she's sliding the hand on the ice and then oh, I was like, yes, yeah, and then they go into the dance spin, which is also phenomenal. And, and he's I'm like, like more, more of this. 
more of this. manhandling her and like, I never wanted to be her more and have like my man <laughs> move me, but like whatever. Like, I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be an alien that's getting romantic in a spaceship or whatever's happening in this story. Listen, yeah. you don't want, I want to get manhandled in space, okay? In like a Marie France dimension, like yes, okay? While I'm feeling weightless, hello. <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't know what was happening in that free dance, but it got very sexual in the mid program. Yes, like, yes. But almost in like a National Geographic like- For a team that I don't find that. has like a lot of sexual chemistry with one another. Like I find that Marie Franz, can we be honest? She makes Madison Chalk look as gorgeous as possible. And they tend to have Evan wear like, a color where he blends into the background. Amazing. <laughs> but I think, I think the way they have packaged like, Evan, when he looks more handsome. doing the snake now. dress, like I am just looking at her in the makeup and the costuming and he's just like twizzling and like olive green. Behind. I'm not looking at him at all. I'm sorry. It, that dress, like that, it, listen. They it's spent a, all a, that money on that costume cool. for a reason. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I really want to know how much that dress cost. Okay. That's, that would be. I mean, you know, I mean, you, you pay per stone, okay? So when you have that many cutouts, come on, all right? It's a thing, it's a thing. I mean, th what this program reminded me- You know my costume was, was more money than my rent, right? We can just like, for a month, it was more, okay? We're just worth I'm trying to day. decide if that means you have really affordable rent or how nuts you went on the costume, or maybe both. <laughs> that was fun, right? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> What, what the program reminds me of, Dave, is someone that just had like a really epic moment with their program and they're almost trying too hard to do something iconic or something as memorable, like sexy space wear or whatever is going on. Like, I under, again, I understand on paper, if you told me that, I'd be like, oh, maybe they found something cool. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work for me. Did you ever see that movie, Thank You for Smoking, where they're like talking about like, smoke rings in space or whatever they're talking about like just like bullshit movie ideas for product placement that's what okay. i felt going on in this program i don't know what was happening but like the music is it was so almost like a met a met ball you know like when they have like those exotic themes and like yeah. she had this like strange again it, it had like also a bug I, something about the it was she, like the lady gaga bubble drums in a weird way like i, don't, like, I wonder if she's supposed to be a cocoon and there's something about like the caterpillar and she's because the butterflies on the front i don't know it was all and again like you're saying if i have to have performance notes or cliff's notes to to jump on you know whoever them. you know the five people that listen to their podcast are gonna be like <laughs> didn't you know it's this and it's like um no and the judges didn't listen to that freaking podcast either okay also yes although they 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 judged right in line reputation wise but now what's because the elements what were spectacular underneath. the elements were so good right and Sada Hurtado yeah. is giving all the blue sexiness at the beginning of that free dance with a partner she has not a lick of chemistry with. But she is I spectacular. Know. Yeah, she always was. And I'm, I'm trying not to be that guy that like always wishes like two friends will just get back together because obviously there were problems. But And obviously like Olivia is lovely, but there is something that just makes me long for that old partnership. Maybe they can swap partners and Olivia could skate with you. Like there's, Olivia's great. Yeah. I don't know that I, the Mask of Zorro needs time to develop. It needs The concept more. is right, I think. And yeah. there are some moments when you're like, oh, I totally get why you went this route. Like there- Thank there's God, remember it's better than that clown program they did that one season? That was not it. Oh, no. okay. And that was when we saw it live in, in Vegas. And I was like, oh no. Her free so leg is so freaking good. Olivia's free leg is like to die. Okay, to and die. his hips, his hips. He knows how to wiggle them. You and Madison Hubble really appreciating his hips. I, <laughs> okay, like I, listen, Olivia Smart gave us circles. And for that, we can thank her until it got to be Amber Glenn skating to it and everyone else on this planet. Right, but right, right. I'm just bitter because I wanted to do it. But anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but interesting to me do you feel like spain left any more decisive because like we had sarah ahead in the rhythm dance obviously um olivia more ahead in the free and then overall but basically in a dead heat i left thinking let's give it a month i left thinking okay go ahead on finland squeezing right into that 
<laughs> that mix like this they was- had in the ladies and here they had some promising moments. oh only the short program but you know, uh, but the, the the finish team didn't make it out of the rhythm dance at world so like this is this is a step forward they had a lovely thing here and for us to be so engrossed in what's the spanish throwdown going to be and for them to just slip right into yeah to divvy it up that's nice what did you think about fear and gibson here all right so i love them so much right you i think you i like them both like he is a great skip. She is so sassy and so interesting. Has star power and like channeling Tessa Virtue, like whatever like girl boss friendship they have going on. Like I'm loving it the most. All right. Like we just every music choice, like yes. Okay. They look a little bit behind to me in terms of the actual power and right. polish yeah. of the programs. And some of the technical like sharpness in the twizzle kind of moments. And some, program- some stuff has to be sorted. They do need harder transitions to move to that next level. But to me, they're the kind of team that makes me give a shit. All right. There's a lot of yes! teams. <laughs> there's a lot of teams coming up where you're like, they could be good. Like Carrera and Panamarenko are good, but they have yet to have programs that make me want to rewatch. Right. Although I think the quality is there. Right. The skating is good, right? But in terms of being like, Wow. You know what it is, Dave? It's a I have never been st- so ready to cheat for a team than I am for Fear and Gibson, okay? Take it to the bank, all right? They're bringing the art, they're not students. Like what I get from like Ponomarenko, it's like, here are some good kids that do exactly what they're told and they're told what to do in terms of music and interpretation. So I'm not getting art. I don't get a, an artist sensibility from them, but I get that they're doing the right thing. Fear and Gibson, I get like big performance energy. And that Lion King program, Love boy, it. I was such a sucker. I am here for it. I sort of thought they would have excelled hey, more. Ba, 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 ba. And then with the musical you. choice, it was great. I was, and it builds and it's exactly everything you want. So, okay, do they need another transition? You bet they do. Do I care? That's the program I wanted to jump out of my seat and clap for. I love it. I, I yeah. like the costumes are great. The the kiss, great rhythm dance. Of all this cringe, they just need to work on the actual polish it up. Yeah, I hope the judges are ready to go with. I had heard that Edouard was really behind. I had heard that everyone was when we were getting, like, and that they're now moving forward. And you could see from last week to this week, Papadakis and Cicerón went up 10 notches. And, right. and I heard that in two weeks, they went up like 15 notches. Like, so they are We're moving. now on the track, yeah. Yeah. And I heard that Chalk and Bates were behind and I heard, and they all seem like they're moving. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's just like, they took longer to get the programs together and now we're getting into the training, right? Like, and sometimes that happens, so. When, and what I saw, like, again, with the Papadakis, like free dance, again, I see masterful moments. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, and maybe things will get tweaked around it, as opposed to sometimes when we've talked about some teams, please don't tweak. I I think I would just start again. The, the, there are huge focal points that are like set in place to be magic, I see. And then also, that's how I felt about the Chalk and Bates rhythm dance. I think that the way it ends is really effective. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe they want to look at some other parts, but yeah. Okay, so let's say, Papadak and Cizeron, favorites for the gold. Unless to me, get... like a no-brainer, but they're going to pull some shenanigan. I'm so oh, of course. Yeah. Vicky and Nikki, listen. They're going to be too close, but I hope it's a... a favorites for the silver. Should they be silver? What, whatever, right? Like, right. who's your pick for the bronze? Now that we've basically seen everyone's material. So if we're talking about Chalk and Bates, if we're talking about- It's like a three-way heat. For Piper me. and Paul. And if we're talking about um, oh, Hubble and Donna here. You know how I feel about it after seeing it? I don't have a goddamn clue, okay? <laughs> it's gonna come One's back a bigger to mess than that, all right? Yeah. The Canadians are the schmaltz we expect. Oh my but God. It's so funny. I went, with the, I went with Piper Paul in the thing and a lot of people were like, Jonathan likes Piper and Paul. It seems so empty compared to Hubble and Donahue, but the Hubble and Donahue miss was more memorable to me than the lack of memorability in the Canadian material. To me, it's like the Hubble and Donahue doing Janet Jackson in the jumpsuit that just like makes me feel a certain way. I just can't. I can't. <laughs> all right. I'm just, I can't. All right. <laughs> 
I don't find them as sexy as they find themselves. Although I think they're both attractive as all hell. Very okay. much so. Yeah, very much so. But the egos seem like. <laughs> yeah. Those are okay. Which I used to think. Is very Although I'm glad that Gabois seems to be doing less of the forced modeling and more of the skating this year. That seems to be good. What the hell was going on last season? I don't know. We were bored during quarantine, but love it, right? <laughs> I mean, you're trying to create a brand. I mean, I, I get it. Get it. I get it. We get it. There's nothing that I like to do more than take selfies in a public restroom like Madison Hubble. Like, what was happening there last season? <laughs> I don't freaking know. Why is this what all these guys do it? And there's like a toilet or a urinal in the background. And I was like, surely there's a way to angle in the mirror. So we didn't get that. Hello. <laughs> anyway. We digress. <laughs> no, yeah, I think, it's a, I think it's a totally open battle for that bronze. But Talk, I do think like, if it's between those three. Chalk is like, Chalk and Bates is like caterpillars in space. Like, I don't really know what's happening, but like, yes. All right. Yeah. This makes me almost wish that Chalk and Bates had really waited on the snake charmer. So and there's someone they, in my life that always says, you go for the prettiest. So maybe I'm going. <laughs> when like, in doubt, yeah. Of all, all, there are three beautiful teams. They're all very attractive. They all do some modeling, whether it's, you know, on their phones or otherwise. So, yeah, whether uh, anyone has asked them to or not, that's besides the point, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that that old adage? Oh, they're a model? Who's their agent? Instagram? Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. I mean, I don't know. I just want to do the blues program with Sada Hurtado. We could have more chemistry than she does with that Russian. That like red. Sarah, Sarah must have Polish jeans. <laughs> she, she's got some very Polish jeans. <laughs> yeah, she seems real bluesy. I'm going to guess like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, Dave. What about pears? There were some, as you mentioned earlier, there's some nationalistic throwing down happening here. This was its own mini nationals for several countries. Okay. So Jonathan, which country shall we go to first? Jonathan, I have defended the Canadians, Julie Marcotte and everyone for a really long time, right? But yes, I you realized, have. Yes, you I have. realized something when I was like dissecting the KMT program that like it made me laugh so hard I was gonna pee, okay? Remember when Fleur said that like it's so American to do the spiral on the music and we defended it and whatever, right? Yes, and I still stand by that defense. Okay, I do too. <laughs> and like, I couldn't decide if I defended this or not, but I noticed it. But you know that KMT and Michael do do a lift right when the artist says, I will carry you. She says it twice. And then the first time they're doing the crossovers into it. And the second time they do it, I will carry you. And I'm like, this is why Jonathan wants to bomb. Wait, 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 wait. Get it? Do you get it? So, so she's talking about being carried. So he lifts her up and carries her. Yes. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that's that's uh, the sophistication I've come to expect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It happened. It happened. Okay. You know, in the way that you talk about, um, I love that term when you came up with the Halloween costume choreographer Choreogra or yes. choreography. There's also this element of sign language choreography. And I, I don't think that that in helps my- Like the Delabelle and Schoenfelder program to the piano where we did the sign language situation. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's a little literal. <laughs> no. Here's the thing with KMT. I believe that they should be the number one team in Canada, but they're not. And it's their own freaking fault. And we have seen in the past, I love KMT the most, but she is a moody competitive girl who is really good at being phony as hell, right? She's got that Kirsten Chenoweth thing where you know she is really good at putting it on on the talk show and you think she's gonna cut you. But unfortunately, this whole Eric Radford, Vanessa James situation has seemed to like derail her. Right. And I started to notice that last year I wanted to tell her to shut up in the interviews and get her mind together because she started to refer to herself as old. And I was like, mm. there are way older people than you. You have two more years in your career. You can call yourself old for life afterwards. Right. Right. You need to be like, I am the queen of Canada and I am in my prime. The second you start calling yourself old, you're already doubting your own ability. Yeah. And I was like, you need to get your head on straight. <laughs> okay. You yeah. need 
to get top. You waited your whole damn life. You waited out the career of Megan Duhamel. She is no longer around. You are the head bitch in charge. Do not call yourself old girl. This is your moment. You're doing some Julie Marcotte choreography. Like you're putting your hands around his neck and he's swinging you around. Like you're in a rodeo. Like just get behind it. All right. Stop. Don't talk. It All reminds right? me. It reminds me of Caitlin Weaver when she struggled quite a bit with that return announcement of Tessa. That yes. that one year, like when you were like, this team envisioned something and something. Yeah. And I, oh, I, you know what? You know what? That was freaking warranted. That was there warranted. Is no this way. one is not. I there agree. Is no with way you. in hell. They look like old, tired. Like they don't have a lot of. Uh, come on. Did we not see like the clamshell exercises that Vanessa was doing on that lip? I that's exactly I said it, it reminded me of like a frog swimming, but I was like, go ahead on. She was like, get me up there. Here's the yeah. Thing. Vanessa always wore the one pieces, right? And it elongated her line. She's never had the best skating skills. It's if you look at where her placement is over the blade, it's a little on the toe picks and her legs don't extend. It is what it is. But Eric has more finesse in his body than God has given anyone, except maybe Guillaume Cicero, right? right. Yeah. So <laughs> I think Eric maybe might be better at like um, staying on the beat and getting those key points than Guillaume and Gabby ever will be in the rhythm dance because we know that it's not their strength. Okay. Yeah. I mean, remember Boston Worlds? I don't know if they hit a one, but you know what? The judges gave it to them. Thank God they did because that right. free dance was fabulous. Okay. <laughs> did they deserve it in the waltz, the Madonna thing? I don't know. All right. It was, <laughs> um, listen, okay. His skating is really good. They do come across pretentious and smarmy and unlikable. However, It's who they are, you know? Yeah. Uh, they came back pretentious as fuck when they came back here that with this new creation, that Dylan interview, this new energy, this new feeling of home and oh, all the bullshit they were spewing. Oh, my God, it was- Well, it and was all that, like if you don't know that. any of that and you just turn on the thing, you're like, oh look, here's a skating program. To a ballad. It was like watching people think that they're Gabby and Guillaume when they're like. And yet it completely un or derailed their biggest. It would be like if Hawaii and Baker, it would be like if Hawaii and Baker talked like they were Papadakis and Cicerone. It would be like if Hubble, when she came out in the warm up in that white fake mink coat, was acting like she was Papadakis and Cicerone. And then you watch them and you're like, honey, what? I also don't think that the colors of their costumes really go together with the skin tones and the whole deal and everything is dark. And there's like, there needs to be dark and light in this program. It's just like a rainy Sunday afternoon, both programs, the Fallen, the Snoozy. To me, it doesn't have the magique. What need to not? Logistically, what happened on those side by sides when was it that she was taking too sharp a turn in the combo in the free skate? Like she had to like yell because he was like ready to come into her. And they were talking a little bit about it in the kiss and cry. And I couldn't you tell know, if he curved when she failed and almost ran into him. Or I just think it's a lack of mileage between this team. Yeah. Right? yeah. That kind of a mistake. I think it will get better as we see on the Grand Prix. But they're trying to. Here's the thing about coming back in an Olympic season and a new partnership and like, it's a lot to bite off. Well, yeah, yeah because normally what do you say? Don't worry about it, they have time, but there is no time. Yeah. Yeah. And again, KMT is- And what the hell was he doing title. after they did the one competition and then he was on vacation in Spain for a week? Like, what in hell are you doing? Like, yeah. it's the Olympics, Tasha. What part of this don't you understand? As Joyce Riker once <laughs> told us. I don't know. Like, and apparently, like, I'm just, but then yeah. I'm like, KMT is giving it to you. She's giving you that title. And that's you. The one thing with KMT, their twist clearly has a technical issue going on in terms of their timing. It has never looked worse. 
and they were doing a double twist at earlier competitions. Of course, Bruno was going to tell us everything was fine. We all love talking to Bruno. He's the nicest man on the planet. But he seemed to be, when he called me recently promoting his Japanese team, maybe not wanting to talk about game two as much because he knew that I was digging, right? Okay, yeah. Listen, he called me, so listen. <laughs> like, <honey. laughs> there are witnesses. We love him. Me too, me too. That great laugh. Um, yeah, the twist is rough for them right now. Yeah. Um, and again, it was another team that it took a while for Michael to sort of get consistent enough. But then once they kind of got to that level, they just kind of have get, been continually giving us, not only in the material, but also in their execution of it, sort of the same thing. And we've seen them sort of do this while people around them are are continually getting better. And, and now suddenly at a Finlandia trophy to see them so far down. KMP she, she, yeah. usually gets it together. My thing is, I think she will find her inner competitive biatch around challenge. Zagreb okay. slash challenge time. Okay. This has happened to her in the past where she gets in her head about something and whatever is going on and boom. And then you see her turn it around. Yeah. It happened before. She looks like she's in that place and it takes a little bit in the fall. At the same time, Vanessa and Eric are gonna have more times to put this together if it keeps getting better, but it hasn't been so great here for them. So I-, I But as an international debut, actually, the judges like- They lost to Kane and Leduc. They I lost know. to Kane and Leduc. But domestically speaking, they're on track. They lost to USA number two slash three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting is that we still haven't heard exactly what kept Cowlang and Johnson out. Although I was hearing more like rumors that it's like actually kind of like a a story that would actually make them kind of interesting. Like it's it's not so like scandalous, but like it, it you know. But until With some they, complexity yeah. or something. Okay. Something along the lines of like a topical cream that they put on that maybe got into your suit that like, you know, allegedly, I don't know, like that's for them, to, but like, oh. you know, it could happen and you're like, oh, you know, that's not even like on the water list. So okay. anyway, interesting there, sorry. The judges clearly want to put them ahead of Kane and Duke. Mm. Going into the US nationals, it looks like a dead heap in terms of hot mess. I mean, if they could make one fewer mistake, I think the judges will be ready to put them. They have one Grand Prix. They could still be assigned a second because there are some unassigned spots. So I don't know. It, it's Again, more of the same. More of the same from them. So I, it's just at this point. With Kane and LaDuke, do you ever feel like we just see no improvement from year to year in the same mistakes? That's what I keep talking about with all this plateauing from KMT also. I'm just like, how is this, how we've, I started doing this show with you in 2014. Like since we have covered some of these people, I feel like it's the same story. The minute we met Brian and Jessica as a team, oh, already we were upset because remember like it had been put in my head if Jessica had teamed up with Tim, imagine how cool that would have been. But we knew that partnership was not gonna happen. Like, but since both teams teamed up, I feel it's been the same story. Just different oh. versions on a, of a, on a new day. You know what I'm rooting for? I want it to be something really crazy, like Chelsea Lou lands her side by side jumps in that like throw dribble loop. And Have that's it? and that's a team the judges are ready to go with if they ever deliver. Judges like giving them some points. Mistrianov? No, that's not how you pronounce it. Oh, Audrey Liu and Misha Mitrofanov. Mitrofanov, that's what it is. Okay. Mitrofanov, I think, yeah. Mitrofanov. But I like Emily Chan and Spencer. I think they've got more potential, but. Okay, okay. Anyway, I did have a lesson with Olga, speaking of them, their coaches. So I was in Boston. Yes. And I'll include some of those exercises at the end. Um, and that's an interesting one. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> talking about home and Hackensack. Yeah, yeah, competitive teaching moment. <laughs> so listen, permission was asked and granted ahead of time. So whether that back was recalled or not. <laughs> <laughs> I, Olga, great technician. As someone pointed out, 
Someone goes, Dave, she's still the same coach that put together Phantom of the Opera and Les Miserables in the same program, but technically she's a great freaking coach. And I was like, I agree. <laughs> and in spite of that, she can help you. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I had a great experience with her. Fabulous. She was so funny is that Russian women love to ask you like rhetorical questions that you never know if you're supposed to answer or not. Right. Because you don't want to be like accused of talking back. So... I always like, Galena always asks me questions. She'd be like, tell me, please. Why? Why you missed this? And you're like, do you want me to answer or not? Yeah. Like, do you want me to answer? You know, as you answer, they're going to be like, (laughs) she goes, tell you why. Yeah. (laughs) Why do adult skaters not look professional? And like, I'm like, does she want me to answer or does she not? I'm like, waiting for her to tell me. Like, I'm like, because we look handicapped. Like, yeah, our knees okay. and ankles. Posture? What are you saying? Yeah. I was like, our knees and ankles are so damn stiff. Well, yes. And lean. Lean. So we worked on freaking lean and the ice, and she was great. She was great. I'll put some of the exercises towards the end. So. I have to say, though, like in an educational environment, it, it's such a style of teaching. And I cannot stand when someone is asking me a question and they want like some weird specific answer. But of course, there are many viable answers to that. Like, can you just tell me in a sentence? Like, I, I, I as an educator, you know in that moment, how like, you know freaking what? scary it is when a Russian woman is asking you a question like that. I, that's what I'm saying. And are you ready to receive and learn an educational moment? Or are you just like panicked and out of your body because you're trying to figure out how to not get in trouble? I kind of respond well to the Russian women though. Galina, Nina, Olga, Olga, I'm here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Even back in the day, Natasha. Or Natalia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. No, Natalia is my Pilates teacher who I also love. So that's just... <laughs> okay. Loving it the most. So, yeah. But yeah. I'll and we be- do love a Russian Pierce team, of which we had two lovely ones here. I know. And what's your money at, at the end of the day? Mm-hmm. Do you have your money on a Terry or Moscovina? I don't know. Is it's it a real, it's a real conundrum for me because, you know, uh, I, I feel like Moscovina is family, right? Yes. She is like family. And listen, do I believe she has rigged a judging panel before? Absolutely. Do I believe my coach has rigged a judging panel before? Absolutely. Do I believe... Do they do it for the right reasons? Yes. Yes. I think they thought so. Yeah. And do I believe that they have since convinced themselves that they did absolutely nothing wrong? Absolutely. Do I believe that they could pass a lie detector test? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. That's the thing. Yeah, I, I 100% believe that. And am I proud of them for it? Absolutely. Okay, like, <laughs> where does Russian look? Where? <laughs> you just needed like a producer's arm to just like present a hand mirror. Like that would have been like the funniest like shtick in that moment. Okay. Like, yes. Okay. I mean, my introduction to Tamara Mosfina was in the CBS interview when they said uh, Mishki Chanuk and Dimitriev were having trouble on the warm up before the short program. And she, I, don't, I think she's talking like Tracy Wilson or something. Yeah. She was like, well, I hypnotized them with my eyes. And like, it was sort of this, is this woman serious? And then when she did the interview with you, she was like, the press always asks such dumb questions. So sometimes I say ridiculous answers to play with them like, I hypnotize my skaters with my eyes. And I was like, amazing that you just owned that like the, your most iconic interview moment for me was totally fake and planned. I loved it. You know that Kalina looks into you in your eyes like really intensely before you do a program. <laughs> Any approach, she'll be like. And does that center you? <laughs> it's, it's like an intensity. And she was like, you're going to do this and this and this, and aggressive, and go, and do, you know? And you were like, oh. Even as you're doing that though, isn't it funny? My, sab- my center of gravity starts to go here. Cause oh, I'm like, that. someone, someone Listen. is intense. I she need said, someone to get me in my Johnny, knees. She told me that Johnny and Sylvia used to cry before their free programs all the time. And I believe it. Because yeah. there's nothing scarier than when you're standing in front of your opening pose and she's already yelling at you, but your opening pose and it's like not good enough and not intense enough and your eyes are not, having the snake eyes enough that she wants because she wants you to- And have confidence, have confidence. (laughs) You 
and you take center ice, you're supposed to go. All right. And in order to do that, I would need to believe in myself. In order to believe in myself, I need to feel safe and comfortable. <laughs> well, none of that is happening with a Russian yeah, company. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. <laughs> it would have been me and like Priscilla Hill holding hands and never- Oh, that to a Terry Kuberita, okay? Like you want to feel exactly. calm and centered, like- Yeah. Not yeah. ensemble 70, <laughs> okay? Uh, I, yeah, exactly. Oh, by the way, guess what we found out today? It, you know when I predict things, there are some things I just love to be right, right? I remember last week when I was half joking about how Terry is the mother of the year. And remember when I said that it's just gonna to be too much for Vicky and Nikki to do the rhythm dance and the free. Guess what Sasha Julin came out and said this week? That Vicky and Nikki will do one program at the Olympics, but not the other. I am telling you, Diana Davis, Olympic champion. Do you think they're gonna do that over Buchan? Of course. Listen, Bukin's father won an Olympic gold medal. So freaking. I know, but that's that Olympic. whole story. Who like, gives a nah, shit? Nah, nah. Her mother is freaking a Terry. Okay. They're, they're interested in the now story, not in the yeah, 80s. Because story. what Stepanova and Bukin, they're not gonna win shit. Yeah. What are they gonna right. win? A doping medal for like missing tests? Like, are you gonna be able to <laughs> the Olympics or not? No, they're gonna give them the gold medal and set them up for the bullshit of the next four years when we're being like, Dave, how is Diana Davis? You know, I, I don't yeah. even think she's hearing the music. And I'm gonna be like, well, Jonathan, I don't think the musicality is so good, but I think the judges really like them because her mother is <laughs> very. <laughs> they respond to something about her. Yeah. You know, okay. when the Russians sell you a bottle of bullshit, like, I don't know about the Russ, the Russian mafia, you just have to applaud. Like, yeah, exactly. It. They are the best at spinning. Kellyanne Conway freaking wishes. Tamara Moskvina gave us more Kellyanne energy than anyone else. <laughs> and you know what? I was on her side by the end of it. I was like, you know what, Christine Brennan? Where is the Russian mafia? All right. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, so funny. <laughs> Odd. But we'll see. We'll see which Russian mafia is is more strong at this Paris event. Whether it's St. Petersburg or Moscow. That Razova and Morozov free program music is so freaking boring and played mm. out. Yeah. And I if they're not going to music fifty times and just keep the choreography like Julian likes to do. Remember when he did that with Bobo and Slovia? I don't know. And why didn't we send Tarasova and Morozov to Moscovina? Like we see yeah, what do you think that was. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they're like, they did and she said no. Maybe maybe they're like, she's an old woman. We don't need to put that their problems on her. You know? Yeah. Because I think they know they have a handful. Well, we've got like Ova. I mean, she seems like, but I have to say, there's it nothing that upsets like me more than when the Russians use a ballet reference, but it has nothing, it doesn't actually execute it. A Russian ballet reference that hit the mark would be Ilyenik and Katsal Ilyenik and Katsalapov Swan Lake. Hit the mark, amazing, a thousand percent perfection. Alina Zagitova and ending. Tutu. Yeah. Alina Zagitova and any tutu Halloween costume bullshit, right? You know what else is? The Esmeralda. It has nothing to do with it. Misha that's not balletic. She's not on the beat. There's not a freaking tambourine in sight. It's try, it's trite, it's played out. Masvina, not the best with the short programs in her career. Remember Kazakova and Dmitriev with the Chariots of Fire? What was that happening? I don't know. Like the she picture. needs more time to execute her ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she was giving them the Liebestraum like sort of colorway, the Galliama with all those like pastel, like silvery, purpley moments. Oh. It's a real 92 situation. Yeah. I'm rooting for tomorrow. Even more okay. than... But I, I like the Ross of it more so much mm -hmm. and their quality. But do you notice it's higher. their quality is Harry, if you watch the fluff pieces, seems to have mentioned Evgenia as the problem. I remember him being a problem along the way. And apparently he was like a male diva, but now like Terry is always looking at her. Yeah. And this and those mistakes in the triple toe act. Because when they got it in the short, there was almost like a cushion of air underneath them. And when they get it. I was, when they did that short program, I was, even with like this slight little tightness here and there, I was like, and the problem with the death spiral, I think, but I was like, nobody can take this. 
This is, no one can beat this. When it is executed well, there is no one who can do any of this stuff better. Um, and then of course in the free, they just opened the door for Kalyamov to just slide right through. <laughs> He's got a great lunch. He sure He's does. Great lunch. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Do you know who made me do a lunch with her side by side? Olga. She literally grabbed my hand and like, let's do a lunch together. And I was like, Jonathan would be dying because he'd be like, yes, oh. I love your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. Amazing. Here's to the ladies who lunge. Yeah. Here's to the ladies who lunge. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Um, so you're rooting for Mastvina. Yeah, but I, and I think Mastvina might be able to pull it out. But again, Terry, I, I'm really intrigued. She's going to pull out all the stops on this one. So Mastvina makes me believe that the Russian mafia may not be real. Okay. Mm, yeah, she convinced me. She okay. hypnotized me with her eyes. Yes. Now. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you know, my sister, married, my sister married an Italian. And the, one of the first things he ever said is I had gotten the Sopranos from the library because I didn't have HBO. And he was like, you know, that's, that's not real. It's just a slight on Italian Americans. And I was like, why are you with him? And then she married him. And 10 years later, I'm still like, why are you with him? <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Everyone knows I feel this way. <laughs> okay, okay, amazing. <laughs> we like my nephews a lot, okay? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, so it's good for some. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, how we feel about life. Anyway, um, I digress. You know, the Spanish pair team, I think people are behind them. I think that they're good. I felt like they don't really have the extension or the skating skills as much as they were vaunted here, but I do feel like it's a country that doesn't have a lot of skating history in the pair discipline. So everyone's behind them the same way the momentum is going to be behind that Japanese pair team. So. Right, exactly. It's exciting when a federation is finding its way in a new discipline. A hundred percent. I like them. Do I yeah. love them? No, no uh, but they'll be an important team, most likely for the country. That's for sure. The same way, like, why does the Japanese team have to do the woman on the land? Like, why did we need that Julie Marcotte bullshit back? Like, what was that? I saw Marissa in person this week. I also saw Mariah. Oh. Yeah, oh. I went to... Um, like the Burbank rink, not knowing, and Mariah was there. I was like, hi, <laughs> like, what are you doing? Hello, yeah, yeah, okay. I was like, I thought you were at Scob. Like, what are you doing? But anyway, she's coaching, doing very well. So well, good for her. her. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. It's, it's, uh, yeah, lots happening. What do we get next week? Hopefully break. No, I think we've got the Asian Open coming up and then Skate America. You know, the yeah, one that- I know I Skate America is the one after that, but I was curious about next week because it wasn't there, some confusion about the Asian. Open. Well, everyone's withdrawing from it because you know we're going to China during a pandemic. You know, right. there's that right. situation happens. And to clarify my last comment, and I should have clarified this, we do know that there are spectators. There are no foreign spectators. Oh, don't worry, Jonathan. Maybe, maybe about people fifty people commented, each one wanting to be the first one to say it. So they're <laughs> assertive enough to correct you in the comments, but not not to look that fifty people said the exact same thing. <laughs> and I, I, wrote, do, I don't and to don't each person i wrote thank you thank you doing the good work i'm just curious like is it the kind of thing where china will encourage its residents to really fill those seats which is something that i could see happening which actually would give a different dynamic to it or or will it be vastly open like it wasn't here but hopefully we see sui and han i'm ready for it okay yeah same same I'm ready my body is ready all right. The same way that Skatey magazine cover where like Brandon's in the sunglasses and Alexa looks like she's gambling and laughing and like. Because it's like some Vegas promo. For yes. Her. Oh my God. Yeah. I was like, oh, Skatey magazine. I can't believe you're still a thing. Yeah. Excuse me, Jonathan. They are a proud publication of the U.S. Figure Skating Association. How freaking dare you? Okay. I used to subscribe to it when it was every other month was the glossy one, and then every other month was like Jonathan. a cardboard icky one with just results. Yeah. Jonathan, I want to win at nationals in the championship event, not because just that I'm a greedy mother effer who wants to win. Don't we want you as figure skating to have to mention us in a, an official publication, have to print a photo? Because you know they'll never do it otherwise. 
I remember Aviva Cantor was like, oh, I should profile you in the magazine. And I was like, ah, that's never happening. They would never yeah, allow Good luck. Well, that's like when people were very sweet and they were like, oh, should we get you guys um, a cardboard cutout? And I was like, I, I don't think I would like a cardboard cutout available to anyone at a skating event. <laughs> the graffiti that could happen on that thing. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Thank you, no thank you. Because I know what they, I would, they would have, have done. to do an interview. They would have to do an interview. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Be like, what do you do outside of skating? <laughs> I work in communications. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so funny. So, well, don't you remember Elvis Stoiko was always saying the thing? He was like, you have to give them no reason but to do the thing that they don't want to do. And it's just like no one Elvis wanted me to win. Stoico, what? I don't know about any Elvis Stoico. Have you not read about the Panama Papers going on here? The Pandora Papers and Elvis Stoico and the 6.5 million and the offshore account. And he's saying that it's just his lawyer, but they're talking to other Canadians being like, well, you know, maybe skaters aren't like the smartest and there are people that are trying to take advantage of them financially, but then why was Skate Canada signing off? I mean, this is a freaking scandal. And my favorite part about it is that Skate Canada was somehow involved in some like offshore funny money business going on with Elvis Stoico and them at the ISU, to which someone said to me, the ISU is in Switzerland for a reason. And I was like, you know what? They do have a lot of events with empty crowds. Is there money laundering going on all over the place? I wouldn't be shocked. Okay. like. Like, why do we have so many events in countries like Slovenia and like Estonia where like there's no skating? Right, right. There's no crowd. But somehow year after year, we have events going on there. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. How did you find out about this Elvis Circo thing? Now I kind of want to do some additional research. Check your DMs. I'm sure people have sent this to you. Probably, actually. But I get so overwhelmed by them that I never answer. <laughs> <laughs> I should I should check them again. I should check them. Again. Check them again. I'm okay. gu guaranteed it's in there. All right. Okay. Google okay. Elvis Stoico, and you'll just be like, what the hell? Elvis? Offshore. Okay. Okay. I just I don't think Elvis did it on purpose. I don't. I don't believe. I don't know. I love him. I okay. believe in a lot of those moments. You entrust people, and it's those people that are ultimately handling it. But I'm sure there's some signed contract somewhere they'll put some on. Like, why is Kate Canada involved in signing off on that? I would like a much bigger investigation. It was like so. It's part of like a much bigger thing, and like he's like one of the many. Listed right? in. But, okay. okay. I mean, yeah, they're talking about like Tony Blair and like other people, and like yeah. Oh, this. Thing. I do know about this. Yeah. I didn't realize Elvis was a part of it. I did know that they published that list of names. Okay, all right, okay. I'm with you now. Took me 10 minutes, but we're here. <laughs> but like for us, we're like, wait a second, Skate Canada, Elvis Stoico and John Durkama, what? So like, yes. Tell me more, yeah. Tell me okay. more, I digress. Holding Edge, it looks sexy. <laughs>